Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel after a very long time. I took a bit of a break but now I am back. And in this video today we're going to be doing the room homepage. We did this before but we built it in React.js and I recently got a comment on my YouTube channel requesting that we redo this challenge in Vanilla.js and so that is what we're going to be doing. So you can head over into frontendmentor.io for slash challenges and then you can search for this challenge. You can download the starter files and then extract them. And that is what I've done. So I have opened up the folder in VS Code and this is what we have. We have our design folder. We have our images folder. We have our git ignore and our index HTML. And we're just going to be working inside this workspace. And so to begin, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to create a new file called index.js, obviously for our JS. And then I'm going to create another file called index.css for our CSS. And inside the index HTML, if you take a look, then you're going to see that we're going to have just a simple template of everything that we're going to need. So this is going to be the navbar. And you know what? We should probably take a look at the design first of all. So the desktop preview. So if you take a look at this, you can see that we have the navbar right here. We have a section to the left, which is the image, and then this to the right, and then another about section on the bottom. So that is how we're going to stretch it. So all of this is going to be inside a main parent component. And then this part here is going to be a section on its own, which is going to have our divs and as well as the div for the text. And then on the bottom, we're going to have another section, which is going to be divided into three divs, which is going to be this first image, then the text, and then the second image on the right. And so let's begin by doing the following. Inside our index HTML, I'm going to go ahead and cut all of this out. So just cut it out all the way to the bottom and then place it inside a main element like so. And then let's go ahead and change this into my website, which I forgot to renew. So http://sbsankara.netlify.app and then change this to my name. And then once we do that, then we can go ahead and begin to structure out our web app. So this first part is going to be a navbar. So I'm going to create a nav element. And then inside this nav element, I'm going to create an unordered list with, I think there are four list items. And then each of these list items actually is going to be a button because we're going to style out the buttons to look like links. And the reason why I'm not using an href here is because it's not linking to any page in our application. So we don't really need to render them as hrefs. So just cut that out, paste it here, cut this out, paste it here, and cut this out, paste it here. So that now we're going to have the structure of list item and then button. And then you can break this apart just for semantics. There we go. And then now let's see. So we need uh where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We need we need this logo. We are provided with this logo. So what we're going to do is okay. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this entire nav element, cut it out, and then place it inside the header, and then paste it in. And then above or rather below this, we're going to have a div, and this div is going to be an image, which is going to be coming from dot slash images for slash logo dot svg. And then I'm going to just say room for the alt attribute, and we're going to have that. Let's separate it out. And then we have this section right here. So this section contains three slides, right? So this is the first slide that is visible by default. And then the second slide is this one. And then the third slide is going to be this one. So what I'm going to do therefore is just cut this entire thing. So right below, right before about our furniture, just cut everything up to the top. And then we're going to render this inside a section with a class of slides. This is just so that we can style it out in our CSS and then paste it in. And then we're going to grab now this individual section. We're going to cut it out and place it inside the div with the class of slide. Now, slide singular. Paste it in. And actually you not, know we need to cut that out still. So we're going to render first an article and then we want to render the image first of all. So dot slash images, and it's going to be desktop image hero one. And then below this article, we're going to render another article and then paste in our text. So this is going to be an H2. And then this is going to be a paragraph. And then this is a button. So button. And then the button has an icon right here. 
this arrow icon so that's what we want to render and that icon should be called the icon arrow i think it should be so let's go ahead and say it's you now image dot slash images forward slash arrow icon arrow dot svg and then let's see we need to do we need to have rather this structure for the remaining two slides so just cut this out once again paste it inside a div and then grab this text paste it inside an article and then above this article we need to have another article another article which is going to hold our image for so image desktop hero 2 cut this out paste it inside an h2 cut this out paste it inside a paragraph and then you know what? this button is the same for all of them so we don't really need to type it out we can just copy and then paste it here and then we can paste it here as well and then grab all of this cut it out paste it inside a div sorry inside an article i keep forgetting so inside an article and then this is going to be our h2 so oops didn't mean to do that so inside our h2 and then grab this paste it inside our paragraph and that should be fine now we just need to render the image on top so article img that is coming from dot slash images forward slash desktop hero 3 okay and before we save that let's go ahead and build out our second section so cut this out this is going to be section with a class of section dash two and then section two is divided into three so we have our first div which is going to be our image dot slash images and it's called it's called about what's it called about dark and then we have another div which is going to be our text so our h3 here is going to say about furniture and then below this h3 we're going to have a paragraph that says this cut it out and paste it here and then below this div we're going to have another div which is going to be an image and then we're going to say about light for our image source now i'm going to save that and it's going to format it because i have prettier enabled and then when i right click i also have an extension that is called live server so i'm going to open this up with live server and you can just search for it in your extensions if you're using vs code and then you can install it so open with live server and it's going to open up this application in the browser and so once it opens up you can see that we have this and it is quite ugly looking so we're going to begin to style this out so the first thing that we're going to do therefore is we're going to jump inside our index.css right here and we want to reset everything so we don't want these kinds of margins and then these bullets and then this spacing we don't want all of that so i'm going to use my asterisk which is my universal selector and then i'm going to say reset the padding on everything to zero we set the margin on everything to zero and then set the box sizing on everything to border box so that it uses the css box model and then for the body i'm going to give it a background color of white i mean it is white by default but you know you can add this or not it doesn't really matter really it doesn't have like that significant of an effect and then on the body what else do we need nothing really we need on the paragraph we need the line height to be a bit bigger so 1.8 so that it's readable and then we want the color for the paragraphs to be hashtag about 444 so that they're just a bit grayed out and you'll notice that uh oh sorry we haven't linked our file so we need to link our css file right here so link and then index.css save it and then that should now reset everything as you can see that now our line height on the paragraph has increased and it is now just a bit gray instead of black and then before i forget like i forgot this one let's also go ahead and link our index.js file so right before the closing body tag we want to link our script source and it's going to be index.js so that when you start writing our javascript we don't keep on wondering why things are not working so back inside our css let's style this out to look better and we want to style it out for mobile first so let's shrink all of this shrink that i mean you can close this really and let's begin to do the following so we're going to access the header and we want the header to be positioned absolute absolute so that it goes be or rather on top of the image in this case 
and then see how we have a horizontal scroll bar is because the images are too large. So what we need to do is we need to reset the size of the of the images so we can set the max width to 100% and that will cause them to take up 100% of the container in which they are placed. In this case, it is the body. And then what you can do now is inside the header, we can give it a padding all around of 24 pixels so that it pushes inwards. And I've just noticed that we, we need to remove these bullets. So I can say that for the ULs, then the list style type is going to be none, which is going to remove the bullets. Now I want to give some global styles on all the buttons. So basically these ones as well as this one. I don't want this default styling on the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that for all the buttons, then the background color is going to be transparent. And then the outline is going to be none because we don't want an outline when you focus on it. And then the border for each one of them is going to be none as well because we don't want a border. And when I save that, we can work with that. Uh, sorry, let's set the font size, font size to one rem because buttons by default are just a bit smaller in size. And then we can set the font family to inherit so that it inherits the font family of the body, as you can see right there. Now let's move these styles up a bit. And there we go. So let's go ahead and continue to style our header. So inside the header, we have a nav element. And then inside the nav element, we have our UL, which is our list items. So we can say display flex on the list items. And then I can say give it a gap of about, let me say 24 pixels, is that too large? I mean, you can work with that. And then I also want the list items. So we can access the list items and then the buttons because the, the, the these links are buttons, we place them to be buttons. And you know what, I want all the buttons to have a cast of pointer, I just noticed. So all the buttons should have a cast of pointer so that when I hover over them, then the cast is going to change into a pointer. And let's see, so we want to change the color of the text. So the color here is going to be hashtag white or hashtag FFF. And then just to add some bit of interactivity, what I want to do is I want to add a focus state. So when we focus on the button, then I want the border on the bottom to be two pixels solid and white. And what that's going to do is the following. So when I focus on it by clicking it, then you have a border on the bottom. So I want that. I mean, it doesn't really do anything for this website, but it just adds like kind of like um, uh, an experience. Uh, you, it improves the user experience because you can see that when you click on this, then you're focusing on this particular button. Now let's bring this UL to be on the same line as our logo. The way we do that is by going inside the header right here and saying display flex on the header right there. And then you can say align it up center so that it moves down just a bit and then justify content to flex start. And then let's give it a gap as well of 24 pixels just to make this even. And then in case of smaller screens, let's check this out. What you'll notice is that this happens, right? This happens like the logo shrinks. Notice that the logo shrinks. We don't want that to happen. So what we can do is we can say flex wrap of wrap. And then that is going to bring the logo on top and then the links on the bottom. I mean, this is not really readable, but you get the gist, right? And then let's bring this back right here. Fantastic. And then let's do the same for the UL, just in case like the screen is a bit too small, we can say flex wrap wrap. And then let's see, let's go inside our first section. And sorry, not inside our first section, but inside our first slide. So for the dot slide, we can go ahead and say that we want to go and access, how do I structure this? Where's the structure, where's the structure? Uh, wait a minute, what? Div the class of slide. Okay, I did not give this a class of slide. So give this second div a class of slide for this second slide. And then this one as well, a class of slide. Save it. And then now we can style all three of them at once. So let's go ahead and say, what do we need to do actually? Uh, the slide, let's go inside the H2, make it bigger, so font size, make it about 28 pixels. And then let's give the margin bottom of 24 pixels. 
okay too big let's say 16 pixels and then for the dot slide uh sorry not for the dot slide actual points for the dot slide i want to go inside the article that has the text so that should be the second article and we can do that by saying we want the article with the nth child two and then give it a padding of let's say about 32 pixels on the top and bottom and 24 pixels on the left and right and that is going to push the text inwards and downwards as you can see and then let's go ahead and access this button so we can do the very same thing we can go ahead and copy this and put it on the bottom and remove this part right here we can just remove that part actually and then let's say that for the button which is going to be basically this one then we want to go ahead and style it out so we're going to say text transform and set this to uppercase so that if it is now uppercase and then we're going to say letter spacing let's change this to about how does 10 pixels look like that looks okay and then let's give it a margin top of 16 pixels to push away from the paragraph and not let me increase it to 24 pixels just to make it a bit bigger and when i'm styling this you'll notice that it is also styling for all the other slides because we're using the same class name and then let's add a hover state for the button so we can copy this paste it here and say that for the hover state then we want the letter spacing letter spacing to increase to 32 pixels and what that will do is when I hover over it, then it increases the letter spacing. Now, 32 pixels is a bit big for small screens. So let me just say about maybe 26 pixels, just to make it a bit uh, like. So 26 pixels, this is how it looks like. And then let's add a transition here so that it's smoother. So transition, the letter spacing. Actually, that work by 0 0.2 seconds and then is in out. Let's see that, there we go. So that is the, the transition that we're going to have for our button. I mean, you can add any kind of transition that you want here, it doesn't really matter. And let's see, that should be fine, right? That should be fine. And then let's tell our about section right here. So for the section dash two, I think that's what I called it. Let me just confirm. So for section two right here, we want this first div and then the second div and then the third div so what we're going to do first of all is we want these images to take up the entire width of the screen so i'm going to say that for the section 2 and every image inside section 2 we want the width to be 100 percent that is just going to increase it and then i'm going to say that for dot section 2 i want the div which is the nth child 2 meaning i want the second div and I want to give it a padding of just like I did on top, which was 32 pixels on the top and bottom and 24 pixels on the left and right, which is going to push this inwards. And then we can copy this again. Let's say that we want to access the H3. And then for the H3, we want the text transform to be uppercase. And then we want the letter spacing to be four pixels. And then we want the margin bottom to be 12 pixels. I can't remember the margin that I used here. It should be 16, right? I think it was 16. So just to keep it uniform. There we go. And there we go. Fantastic. Now, when I increase this, you'll notice that this doesn't look all that good. So let's fix it on larger screens. So let's make this full screen. And then we're going to say at media. So we're going to add our media queries. And I'm going to say that for a mean width of 1024 pixels, which is laptop size screens, then I want the dot slide to display as a grid and then with grid template columns to repeat twice and one fractional column each and this is going to bring the text here and then I can say something like did I say place item center place dash items and set this to the center what does that do I mean it it works but I, I kind of don't like it but we can work with that anyway so let's let me increase the size of this h2 so for the dot slide dot slide h2 increase the font size here to about 36 pixels make it massively bigger too small let's say 48 pixels make it bigger much much bigger okay that looks okay that looks okay 
we can increase the text for this one as well so let's say that for the dot slide and then the paragraph we want the font size to be 18 pixels just to make it a bit bigger and we can work it that that looks nice and then for section 2 right below here we can say that for the dot section 2 class we want this to display as a grid with grid template columns to repeat three times and one fractional column for each of them and we're going to have that fantastic looking nice 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 and so once we do that then obviously the next step is to hide the slides that we are not viewing so the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to go inside the slide which is right here where's the slide i don't have the slide okay so i'm going to say that for the dot slide class i want the slide to have an opacity of zero and that is going to do that but you notice that on the bottom we can see this so an opacity of zero and then i'm going to say position this as absolute so that it is taken out of the flow of the website as you can see right here and then we can say that when the slide has a class of active then we can set the opacity to one and then we can set the position to relative now when i save that nothing still happens nothing changes on the screen but if i go into one slide such as this one right here which is the third one and i add a class of active on it then we are going to see the third slide okay so that is basically the functionality that we're going to be creating using javascript and actually i've remembered we need to add our buttons to move forward and backward so let's do that right on top right here and i'm going to create my ul with two list items which are going to be buttons and then this button the first one has really so the first one is going to be dot slash images forward slash arrow angle left yes left and then the button we're going to give this button an id of what should i do um let's say this is the previous button so id of previous and then for this ul i'm going to give it a class of buttons just so that we can style it out in our css and then we're going to copy uh, you know what we don't need to copy anything i'm going to give the second button an id of next and then inside here we're going to have an image which is coming from dot slash images forward slash icon angle right so when i save that and just separate it out you'll notice that our buttons are right here but they're white in color so we can't really see them and so let's tell those out so right below our header you can say that for the buttons and then for the buttons what they call it for the buttons and then the button inside so for the buttons and then each of the buttons inside i want to give it a background color of hashtag black so zero 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 and then i want to give it a padding of let's say eight pixels on the top and bottom and 16 pixels on the left and right and we're going to have that so those are our buttons and then for the dot buttons class so the actual ul i want this to position as absolute absolute which is going to take it out of the normal flow and you can see it is now behind the image but if i give it a z index of about 10 or 1 really it's going to come on top as you can see and then now i want to bring it from here and place it here so i'm going to say that bring it to the left by 50 percent and then bring it to the bottom by zero and now it doesn't really uh, come here as you'd expect that is because it is currently positioned absolute relative to the body but what we want is we want to position this absolute relative to the slide and so we're going to go inside the slides class so this one right here because the slides class is the parent for all our slides so we want to give the slides so let me go above this and i'm going to say that for the dot slides class then i want this to position relative and when i save that then now our buttons are going to come there so that is what we want to happen and then now let's make this a flex box so inside the buttons i can go right here and say display flex which is going to place our buttons like so and then i want to increase their size so let me say 16 and 24 16 pixels on the padding and 24 pixels as well just make them a bit bigger and then once again i want to access the hover state so when i hover over the buttons i want the background color to change 
into hashtag 333 and then I want to transition the background color by 0 0.15 seconds and ease in out for the cubic this year curve and when I save it then this is what is going to happen now this looks okay so next what we need to do is now add in our JavaScript functionality so what we're going to do is we're going to jump inside our index.js and the first thing that we need to do is get our next and previous buttons so I'm going to say const previous button is equal to document dot get element by ID and we give it an ID of previous and then for our next button so I'm going to say const next button is equal to const next button is equal to document dot get element by ID and want the ID of next and then we also need to get all the slides that are currently in our document so for that we're going to use a document document dot query selector all and want to select all the slides that have a class of slide now what this will do is and actually let me just console log it so that I can explain it so if I console log slides and then save it and then take a look in our console what you'll see is that it is going to return a node list right here so it returns a node list of three items and because it's a node list it is zero based so it starts indexing from zero so zero one two means we have three items so that means that we can loop over this because we can treat it as an array we can loop over the slides and then we can change the the active class that is currently on the slide and so in order to do that what we're going to do is the following we are going to go ahead and create a variable here which we are going to call active slide and the the active slide we're going to set it to the position of zero because once again notice how this is zero and then one two so we want the first position which is the position of zero and then we're going to do the following we're going to go inside the next button and we're going to be adding an event listener on the next button and we're going to be listening for a click event so we're going to say that when we click on the next button we want something to happen and so the first thing that we want to happen is because we're going forward by clicking the next button we want to we want to increment the active slide by one so we can say active slide active slide is equal to active slide plus one meaning incremented by one now you can do this or you can just simply say active slide plus plus active slide plus plus which is going to which is basically the same as this now depending on your programming preference you can do either one and then we're going to say if the active slide is greater than the slides dot length minus one then we want to go ahead and set the active slide to zero and let me just explain that a bit so the current the active slide is currently set to zero meaning it is the first item now when you do slides dot length what you get is a number that is not zero based so instead of getting like a number like zero one two you're going to get three and actually it's right here well, let me just zoom in it's right here so it says that the length of the node list is currently three but it is zero based so what we're saying is get the active slide which is zero based and check for whether it is greater than the slides dot length which is not zero based so we are we are taking away one here minus one so that it can go into the zero based version of the node list that we get back meaning it's going to go back into the last item right i hope that makes sense now once we do that then what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that says show active slide show active slide which is actually going to be the one that changes the the current class list on the slide now let's go ahead and create this function so that we can test out whether our our application is working so i'm going to say function show active slide active slide and then inside here we're going to get our slides node list this one right here and then we're going to loop over it using the for each method and we're going to say slides dot for each and then for every slide that we get back then you can say slide dot class list dot remove the class of active so we're removing the class of active first of all and so the reason why we're removing it here is we're checking for whether the class of active exists on the slide and if it exists then we remove the class of slide and then show the next slide
and the way we show the next slide is the flow following we're going to say slides and then we're going to set it into the active slide right now remember it is a node list so we can use this kind of array notation on it so we are saying that set the slides into either of zero or one or two because we know that we have three of them so depending on the current active slide then we can set the slide to show on the screen and then we're going to say add a class list here dot add class list dot add and we're going to be adding the class of active so basically if it doesn't have the class of active or rather if we remove the class of active then we go into the next slide and then on that slide we add the class of active so that it actually shows on the screen so i'm going to go ahead and save this and then now let's go ahead and let me zoom this out let's go ahead and try it out so when i click on this it should show the next slide and look at that look at that and when you get to the end you can see that it just scrolls back to the beginning because of this part right here we're saying that when you reach the end then go back to the beginning of the slides so that's looking nice and then now we need to work on our previous button so the previous button is going to be basically the opposite of this so i'm going to say previous button dot add event listener we're going to be listening for the click event passing our arrow function and then we're going to say active slide we want to decrement it so minus minus now which is basically the same as active slide is equal to active active slide minus one so depending on what you want to use i mean it's basically your preference and then we're going to say if active slide so we're going to do the opposite of this so if active slide <coughs> excuse me so if active slide is less than zero then we're going to say set the active slide active slide is equal to slides dot length minus one so if it is less than zero meaning we are already going lesser than the actual number of slides that we have so when i save this we can go ahead and try it out and we can click on it uh okay it's not working it's not working because i'm not calling this function so we need to call the function that is called show active slide right there and then now if i try it out there we go there we go would you look at that so we can go forward we can go backward and then now another thing that you can do is if you don't want this kind of jumpy transition what you can do is inside your css right inside the slide notice how we have we are toggling the opacity here you can just go ahead and say transition transition the opacity by 0 0.5 seconds and then is in out i mean you can you can play around with the the animation duration but we can use 0 0.5 just for the sake of demonstration as you can see that looks okay so now all you need to do is just submit this once again to front end mentor so let me go ahead and open up my github my github and then we can close this and then we can close actually we need this so visit challenge hub because we want to go ahead and submit a new solution oops didn't mean to click that did not mean to click that so submit new solution and then let this open up so create a new repository and i can shut most of these things down so we can shut down live server we can open this up because we need to view this and then let's create a new repository so the repository here i'm just going to say room home page dash js so the js version and then we can say it's a public repository so create repository creating 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 there we go and then we can copy this link and then instead you can say get in it okay there we go and then get add design and then get add images images and then get add dot get ignore then get add read me so both of them so read me star then get add style guide dot md then get commit and i can say initial commit for them and then get add index.css and get commit and i'm going to call this css get add index.js and get commit and i'm going to say slide functionality and then get add index.html and get commit and i'm going to say html template and then get remote add origin and then paste in the link that we copied 
and I get branch dash capital M main. So move it to the main branch and then git push dash u origin main, which is going to push it to the main branch. And then we can go into Vassel, I think. Vassel or Net Netlify, uh, does it really matter? I don't think it matters. So as this pushes, we can open up Vassel and then we can just say add new. So add new project. So opening, opening, we want to import a Git repository. Once this thing loads in sometime today. So room by JS, there we go. So this one that we've just committed right now. So import this. And I mean, I can just call it that. It doesn't really matter really. And then deploy, you don't have any environment variables and we don't need any build settings. So you can just wait for this to deploy. And let's see, this is finished. So I can close this and then I can close this one as well. And then we can say what? There we go, so it's finished. And so once I open it up by clicking on this, then it's going to open up right there. So let's copy this link and then let's go back into Frontend Mentor. And then this is going to be the live site URL. And my computer is just hanging for some reason. And then we're going to reload this just so that you can see that we have our repository here. And then you can copy this link for the repository. And then this is going to be the repository URL. And then I'm going to say mobile. I mean, uh, let me just say room home page in vanilla JS. I think that's better. And let's see, we don't need that. I don't need to write a preview. I mean, does that? I don't want to write all of that. So let's just see submit solution. And then wait a moment. And there we go. There we go. So we can take a look at our, where is it? This one. Let's take a look at it and then where's the solution and the design. So this is our solution and then this is the design. I mean, we're a bit far off from the design. <laughs> oh, you know what? What I did was I left the active class on on this one. That's why it's showing the, the third image first. But you know, the functionality works, so it's okay. It's very much okay. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and i will see you in the next video bye bye